I legit feel like a Disney princess right now. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my studio, I'm Lydia and today I'm bringing you the long-awaited milkmaid dress pattern and also blouse. It is the exact same pattern as my first video that I did. This is just a more beginner level construction that I'm going to show you today. I am very excited to announce that this pattern will be free for the month of June. It's actually my birthday month so I thought why not give back something to my subscribers. Also, if you end up making this pattern, Pepper would love to see it, right Pepper? So tag me on Instagram at Lydia Naomi Studio or hashtag Lydia Naomi. Not only do I love to see it, it's actually a really great and easy way to support me and just get the word out and share with all those sewers out there and those beginner sewers that are yet to join the family. And last of all, I have a lot of sewing tutorials and beginner tutorials up my sleeve that you do not want to miss. So subscribe, ring that bell, like this video if you enjoy it, and let's get started. Okay, from this pattern you can create three different styles and I dare say more if you get creative. We've got a blouse with a ruffle hem as style A, a thigh length half circle skirt dress as style B, and a longer version for style C, basically what I created in my first Milkmaid tutorial. Today we're going to make style B and in my next video style A, so stay tuned! To make style B, you're going to exclude the waist ruffle pattern piece and use everything else. We are making an unlined dress, so you only need to cut the shell amounts, with the exception of the bodice cup, which we'll cut four times to add some structure to the bust area. All of my patterns have seam allowance built in. The seam allowance for all pieces in this pattern is half an inch or 13 millimeters, except for the bust tie piece, which I will get into later. I've made this dress available in size 0 to 20. Be sure to first view the instructions file as it provides the size chart, flat pattern measurements, material estimates, and basically everything you need to know. So definitely don't skip looking at it. I always recommend that you do a sample in some test fabric, at least the bodice, so that you can be sure it will fit you how you like, but that's definitely up to you. The pattern comes in US letter and A4 compatible files, as well as a copy shop file in A0 size. I've got you covered, sister. Refer to my tutorial linked below for how to print and paste together your PDF patterns. There does not need to be any confusion. You can use Adobe Acrobat, which is a free download to choose a size layer that you want to print, and then print out an actual size or 100% scale, nothing else, or you'll be messaging me asking me why it printed funny, which is fine. I just want to save you that headache. Oh, there's Pepper, always getting so curious when the printer fires up. It's so cute, and instead of paying attention to what I was printing, I was intent on capturing her curiosity and realized that I printed all the sizes because I forgot to select only the size I wanted, which is size 8, but that's okay because each size has a different line so that you can tell the difference between sizes if you print them all out. I cut off the appropriate edges of my printout, again that's in my tutorial that is linked below, pasted these together and cut out the pattern pieces. Just to note that my skirt length is 20 inches, I will show you how to easily lengthen the skirt pieces at the very end of the video. Okay, I've got all of my pieces cut out. It's time to cut in fabric. To create my size 8 unlined dress, I used 2 yards of fabric and a 16 inch zipper with the matching thread. I also used half a yard of twill tape for the back and about 1.5 yards of elastic for the sleeves. All of this information is in my instructions file, so again, I will reiterate, do not skip reading that file. When cutting, you can fold your fabric lengthwise parallel to the selvage. There's pepper intent on making all of my fabric dealings eventful. When cutting, make sure that the grain line on your pattern piece is parallel to the selvage of the fabric. It's basically the side of the fabric that has a finished woven edge, not the cut side. Thank you. 
You want to start by overlocking your pieces. Here is my guide. You want to overlock where the pink lines are located in this image. For those of you who don't have an overlocker, just set your machine to a zigzag stitch and sew along the edge of your fabric. This will keep it from fraying. Okay, let's get our bus ties sewn up first. I like to use this bias tape maker instead of sewing a tube and loop turning it. I don't really know which is easier. It's probably actually easier to sew a tube and then loop turn it, but I just learned this in a past job that I worked at, so I'm gonna do it. So this folds the strip of fabric in on the sides, hence the dotted lines on your pattern pieces. Then you need to fold it together one last time. Head over to the machine, fold the end down to create one finished edge, then fold the strip lengthwise once again and sew it up. Remember to backstitch at the beginning and end. Take all your bodice pieces, these are going to be sewn together at half an inch or 13 millimeters with right sides facing together. Leave the center back seam open for the zipper. I fold the seam allowance to the side once and then sew the seam allowance to the outer shell of the fabric. This is called top stitching. It's at this point that you could insert boning. Head over to my first milkmaid dress tutorial to learn how to do this. I really do like this soft construction though without the boning. I was surprised that it held up quite well and it's understandably more comfortable. Okay, the bus cups. You should have four pieces. There's a notch at the center front about one and a half inches or four centimeters up from the bottom. Place your bus cup pieces with right sides of the fabric facing each other. So from the bottom up to this notch, make sure that you always backstitch at the beginning and the end of all your seams. Talking to those beginner level beauties out there. You've got this. You're going to create such beautiful wearable things that even I'll be jealous. Just you keep at it. Press these open and then we are going to turn in the open half at a quarter inch or six millimeters twice and sew a little rectangle to keep it in place. It's gonna look all nice and clean and beautiful. Place your finished pieces with the right sides facing and sew up your half inch or 13 millimeter seam allowance along the top of your bus cups. This is the beginning of your ruffle leading to sewing the bus tie casing. Once you flip it out, you can sew two rows of stitches starting a half inch or 13 millimeters from the sewn edge and three eighths of an inch or one centimeter apart, leaving both ends open. It is at this point where you feed through your prepared bus tie with a safety pin, making sure the enclosed end of the tie comes out the center front of the bus cups. Pin the raw end at the underarm seam, then overlock or zigzag the raw edges of your bus cup. With your stitch length on its largest setting, sew two rows of stitches within the seam allowance of your bus cups between the notches, then proceed to pull on your two bottom threads until the bus cup gathers to the width of your bodice bust cutout. To apply the cups to the bodice, snip about a half inch or 13 millimeters in the center or unpick the stitches there, then you can more easily line them up to either side of the bodice. Pin it in place and sew, sew, sew. Then just to keep that seam nice and crisp, push your seam allowance down towards the bodice and top stitch it. It's totally okay if your stitch is not as close to the seam as mine. We live and we learn and we grow. 
practice makes perfect to add another cliche. To complete the bodice, add a piece of twill tape to the top of your back bodice. This will keep the fabric from stretching out with wear. You could also substitute this with elastic, just don't stretch it as you sew, make it exactly the same length as the top back bodice. Sew it to the top edge, then fold over the edge of the back, half an inch or 13 millimeters, and sew to finish. It's time to get our sleeve ready! With the right side down, fold up the hem of your sleeves at the lower notch. You can pin it in place and then sew two rows of stitches. One along the edge and one 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter lower. Then you're going to need some elastic and either a loop turner or safety pin. Cut your elastic to the size of your bicep plus two inches or five centimeters. Then feed the elastic through the casing you made on your sleeve, securing each end with a pin. Then match your sleeve seams together with right sides facing to sew it up. Okay, once that's done, turn it out, lay them seam up with a double notch on the outer side, which indicates that it matches to the back of the bodice armhole. Place your bodice right side to the sleeve and pin the armpit seam on the bodice to the armpit seam on the sleeve. Pin the rest of the sleeve to the bodice on both sides and sew them up. Simple as that. Now sew a basting stitch around the entire edge of your sleeve cap in the area that is not attached to the bodice. This is going to help us fold in the edges of the sleeve so that we can create a casing to insert the elastic. Pull your bobbin thread stitch to create a slight gather around the sleeve, enough so that when you fold it, it lays flat against your sleeve. You want to fold it in about a half inch or 13 millimeters and pin it all in place. Then sew around it starting and ending your stitch at the front and back bodice. Then feed through your elastic. I use the length of 11 inches or 28 centimeters for each sleeve. Then I tried it on and ended up cutting off another inch. This is with a size eight and this is on me. So definitely check on yourself before sewing it in. If you're going for a bigger size, you should probably start with a longer piece of elastic and then just try it on and see how it fits. Once you're satisfied with the length of your elastic, sew the ends to your sleeve. I made my stitch in line with the stitches on the front and back bodice. I pulled on the bust tie to gather up my cups, tied it with a little bow, and that's your completed bodice with the sleeves. We have now completed the bulk of the challenging parts. The next steps will be really easy. So take your skirt pieces, the center front panel, and the two side back panels. You'll notice that this is actually a half circle skirt. Start by sewing the side back panels to the center front panel. First determine where you want your slit, if you want a slit, and sew that seam first, leaving that gap. Then sew up the other side. Make sure you are sewing these panels right sides together. With the skirt complete, sew right sides together to the bodice. Make sure that you match the center front panel seams on the bodice and skirt. Because the skirt waist is cut on a curve, you may find it seems a little bigger than the bodice, but no worries, just gently match everything, pin it together, and sew the waist seam with the skirt side on the bottom of your machine so that the feed dogs help using in any extra fabric. And you should have no trouble if you do it like this. At this point, of course, I could not resist trying it on just to see how it was coming along. We're at the home stretch. All we have to do is the hem and the zipper. Cute. 
I legit feel like a Disney princess right now. <laughs> Take your invisible zipper and line up the little nib of the top of the zipper with the top fold of your bodice back and pin everything in place. Make sure the right side of the zipper is facing the right side of the fabric. And make sure you unzip your zipper to prepare it for sewing. Unpick two inches or five centimeters of the top fold of your back bodice. This way we'll be able to clean finish the center back with the zipper in it later. Using the invisible zipper foot, sew the zipper to the back seam. Because seam allowance is a half inch and the zipper tape is only three eighths of an inch, I sew the zipper an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. That way the zipper teeth actually end up right on the seam allowance. And then I don't unintentionally add width to my bodice. Now you can use a regular zipper foot. You'll just really need to move the coil of the zipper over a lot more to get in close. The invisible zipper foot just makes it so much easier though, and you can easily find one for your domestic machine. After sewing the one side of your zipper, zip up your zipper and mark where it lines up with the waist seam on the other side of your zipper tape. I just used a pin. Then line up the other side of your zipper with the other side of your center back dress and pin it in place in the exact same way that we did with the first side. It'll be easier if you just turn the whole dress inside out to do this. Then sew it up. When you pull this seam where the zipper's been sewn, it shouldn't show the tape. I'm actually using a white zipper, so any little mistake will definitely show those white lines of the zipper. That means I haven't sewn it close enough to the teeth. So mine wasn't done perfectly, but I just pressed on because I honestly just wanted to finish this tutorial for you guys. To finish the top, fold back the edge of your back bodice over the folded zipper and sew it with a regular zipper foot. When you turn this out, you've got a nice clean finish zipper end. Then just sew up the resulting gap of your back bodice. To finish off the skirt, we have to close that opening in the skirt below the zipper. You can use a regular zipper foot to get close to the end of the zipper. And with that finish, press it open and turn out your dress so that you can finish the slit and hem. Start on one side of your slit, folding it a quarter, a quarter inch or six millimeters twice. You could also just fold it at half an inch or 13 millimeters once since it's overlocked or zigzagged. I actually like the overlocked there for double folding it because it kind of gives me a guideline for how much to fold it in. So I'm just double folding it as I go until I get back to where I started. Give your dress a final press when you're done to make it crisp and lovely and try that baby on. Oh, and don't forget my short tutorial on how to easily lengthen the skirt right after this.
this moment. So as I promised, let me show you how to lengthen the skirt pattern. So lengthening it to a floor length or midi length or whatever you want is super easy. My skirt is 20 inches in length across all sizes so you can find where that hits you on your body and add the length that you want. I decided to add 10 inches just to show you. So I taped some pieces of paper to the bottom of the skirt. These actually came as pieces of packing paper in an online order that was shipped to me. As the saying goes, waste not, want not, am I right? So I piece those sheets together along the edge of the skirt hem. You really can use anything, wrapping paper, newspaper, whatever. Then taking my meter stick, I continued the angle of the skirt edges to be 10 inches longer. Then with a smaller ruler, I measured 10 inches from the hem all the way around, making marks about two inches apart. Then just connected these freehand, like connect the dots and cut it out. So that's the side back piece lengthened. And then you just do the exact same thing with the center front panel and it's done. Wasn't that easy? Like this video if you enjoyed it, comment below and subscribe. Feel free to check out some of my other videos and I will see you in the next Milkmaid tutorial. Bye.